Hey everyone, welcome back. Here's me grabbing the Tenet Envoy. Continuing the trend from the last video, we're going to try and finish out the sisters' weapons this week. Also, as some of you may know, I finally moved. So, now I have much more time again. It was definitely a wild ride and, well, now my feet hurt. Anyways, as the thumbnail says, better than Viral Slash? Well, that depends, and on the kind of playstyle you want, but if you like taking a moment to set up stuff like I do with most of my gimmicky loadouts, then you'll be able to appreciate this one. Today, we will compare the classic Viral Slash Envoy and what makes it unique, then to two alternative progenitor setups. But first, let's take a look at how elemental combinations on Lich and Sister weapons work, because it's very counterintuitive and confusing. You've probably seen me discuss this in the Tenet Spearex video long ago. Well, we have a much better idea on how exactly it works now. Basically, modded elements will always come first. If you put an element on the weapon directly, that will always precede any innate or kuva elements. Now what comes next? Well, surprisingly, it's neither. The innate elements and kuva bonus are actually of the same priority. But why can they differ in the order of combinations then? It's because the elements themselves have a priority order. Whether it is innate or from the kuva bonus, certain elements will always combine with your modded element before others. So how does this work? Well, the priority is basically heat first, then cold, then electric, and finally toxin. Secondary innate or kuva elements are irrelevant because they will never combine with the elements you mod on unless you mod both elements. Alright, now that we know this, how does it come into play and why does it matter? Well, this is why you can't get a viral heat spear X even though it has innate heat. If you take toxin bonus and mod cold, heat takes priority over everything. It will combine with your cold to make blast that you've modded and then the toxin is left alone. This explains why I recommended you to take impact for AoE slash or magnetic and manually mod viral to get a universal bonus damage status against both shields and health on Spearex. The same thing also applies to Cycron. Getting viral heat on the Tenet version would be really nice with a single mod if you took toxin. But like Spearex, you'll put on cold and it'll combine with the heat to get blast toxin instead. If you take cold and mod toxin, you still get gas and cold alone because the innate heat takes priority over everything. Now let's look at Tenet Envoy today. The ones I want to look at are Basic Viral Slash, Gas, and Electric. Actually, I have three separate Envoys for this that I picked up live on stream the other day. Toxin for the Viral Slash, Heat for Gas, and Electric for, well, Electric. Why can't we just stick to the Toxin one for Slash and just reuse it for the other two? Because picking the right elements can save you slots and significantly expand your options, as well as opening it up for more DPS. A Toxin Envoy requires you to mod both Heat and Toxin to get Gas and Cold, else with just Heat alone you will get Blast Toxin instead. But if you have a Heat Envoy, equipping just Toxin will give you Gas Cold like we wanted. Now some of you know that Envoy has wire-guided missiles that home in on what you aim at during ADS even after firing. It also seems to slow down the projectile flight speed, so unless you have a reason to do this or just messing around, I would not recommend doing it. There are no other benefits, it's like a budget navigator. I mean, I'm sure you know you can pretend you're using an airstrike, but really it doesn't have practicality and if you're not used to it, it can even make you miss from aiming elsewhere before the shot lands. So let's look at the stock Viral Hunter Munitions build first. Probably the most useful thing is being able to make Viral with zero mods so they can go full deeps. At the same time, this means less status chance on the build, so the Viral proc consistency remains questionable. This free slot on the build is taken up by Prime Fast Hands, as the reload on Envoy is horrible. Or on the other hand, it does holster reload, so if you swing your melee every time after you fire a shot, you should be able to regenerate the shot spent before you need it again. In that case, you may not need this mod and you can run something else. Maybe Amalgam Serration for the Sprint passive, as well as giving you some free base damage to start off before Galvanize and Merciless builds up. Hammer Shot is also a good choice, as it provides some status to help our viral procs. Galvanize Aptitude unfortunately still doesn't work for base damage on the AoE, so that's why we aren't taking that. It does add to the status chance though, but I don't really feel that's worth a full slot. Galvanize Scope has very inconsistent hits, as it isn't like the Brahma with early detonation possibilities on the alt fire. The rest of the build is pretty typical. Fire rate so it shoots as fast as you're willing to click, Prime Firestorm for some extra fat radius. Actually, with Furax's Augment, Amalgam Furax body count, Envoy is the largest AoE meta weapon. Galvanized Chamber for the better bleed and status, and the primary bane to double dip the slash dots. Extremely similar to what you would run on most crit primaries. Primary Merciless is also useful because many enemies will die from Merciless' splash damage as well as free base damage scaling. As I said, because Envoy is a launcher, it's eligible for Amalgam Firax body count. This makes it the largest blast radius launcher, so technically it gives it the biggest AoE of any weapon in the game with 14.88 meter radius. 
So how about we test this one out? The nice thing about slash builds is they can still kill at the start, albeit slower, but it can still get the job done with a couple of shots. Alright, that was before stacking. Now we finally have our Galvanize and Merciless, so we can spawn them again. And here's part 2. Now that's more like it. They die pretty fast, but what you'll notice is that it's entirely dependent on Slash actually procking. And because this is a boomstick weapon with no bomblets, it only gets one 30% chance to proc Slash from 100 munitions. Honestly, this is very similar to the Javlock throw nuke build, except Javlock does way more damage on the throw, slashing easily into several high hundred thousands. But you can only throw it once before you have to pick it up. Either way, the fact I'm comparing to a meme Javlock build is a little bit underwhelming. So anything that is touched by Slash dies. But because it's only 30% chance with country munitions, even if you shoot 3 bullets from multi-shot, there's still a roughly one third chance they will not get Slash. And this Slash requires a crit to function, and Envoy doesn't reach 100% crit naturally. In the end, my opinion is that despite being able to get viral without any mods, it falls too far behind to really be comparable to the other more common AoE launchers. You got an annoying ADS mechanic like Diplos that actually slows the projectile, super slow reload that not only allows you to use the holster reload perk, but actually requires you to, lowish base damage for a launcher, unable to reach 100% status either, and abysmal base fire rate, all for one or two unique perks. I would say one of the most important things to make this weapon feel better is the holster reload itself. If you want to avoid it, you will have to get into the habit of meleeing every time after you shoot so that it immediately starts reloading the gun for you. Unfortunately, this means you can't spam Envoy shots as easily since you will bottom out. But it can still help spamming your build sustain better in magazine economy if there are downtimes between crowds. Honestly, I feel this is one of those weapons that requires combat discipline and arcane avengers to function properly. The stable crits are basically mandatory for slashing, full stacks of merciless and galvanize and we are ready to go. But again, the slash consistency is a real problem on this weapon that only hits once, so let's take a look at a different setup. Here is a heat tenant envoy. Now as a disclaimer, I actually have tested this a bunch and already know how this envoy will perform. There's an electric envoy coming after this too in the video, but that one I'm not as certain how well it will do as I really made this video to test the gas setup. Yes, the percentage is higher on the heat than the toxin when I showed it the first, but this shouldn't really make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. Maybe the difference of one dot tick at most to kill. But like I said before, why did I grab a heat tenant envoy? Look at this. So I put on a Toxin mod alone and we get Gas Cold. Heat is the highest priority, remember H-C-E-T, for Heat Cold Electric Toxin. So the innate cold is left behind. On the Toxin Envoy, Toxin has the lowest priority, so we would combine Heat mods with Cold instead, and this means we would have to slot two mods to make Gas to fix it. So now we free up a mod slot. What do we do with that? Well, the Toxin Envoy saved two slots for Vile Acceleration and Prime Fast Hands. The Heat setup only saves one. It entirely depends on how you want to play the Gas build. If you're using a grouping setup, then you can run Hammer Shot since you probably won't need the AoE from Primed Firestorm. If you just want to spam this around, then you probably want Primed Firestorm. Vile Acceleration isn't really needed on this build to do how we're going to play out our rotation. Amalgam Serration is just there for the sprint speed and some starting base damage since the weapon doesn't have as much scaling as the start as a pure slash build. Alternatively, you can run Vile just like the Vile Slash at Envoy if you really want that, but I don't recommend it. I'm still slotting 100 munitions on this build with the purpose of being used to help set up the starting kills. It also lets the weapon have infinite scaling like the Viral build, except you'd have to outsource viral priming. The gas potential works extremely well for grouped enemies due to lingering in AoE procs with a weapon that has fairly high alpha damage. On a non-grouping build, the damage is less from non-overlapping gas areas, but we will test both. We can also consider Roar in this showcase on the non-grouping setup because this is different than the Slash build. For Slash, we don't really even need Roar because we only have the actual Slash prop which bypasses armor. Viral Slash Envoy is strong enough to kill even without Roar, but Slash consistency is the problem that Helmet cannot fix. Now the missing part of this build and why I think it's better suited to grouping setups, Mesa. I'm sure you recall my Azima meme video that was basically Vobman's Flechette Orb Simulator Light. This augment, Ballistic Bullseye, I set it as 100% status to weapons. Now this is 100% mod status for hitscan and 100% flat for projectile weapons. We were unsure whether Asma's altfire was considered hitscan or projectile, and whether the augment applied to only a single hit of the altfire or the entire duration. 
But the path is much clearer for Envoy. It's an obvious projectile, and it only hits once, so we're going to get 100 flat status on this augment for every shot it applies to. Basically, you need to charge it up before you can use it, so every Envoy shot you will want to uncast your one for the full bonus, shoot, and recast your one to start stacking the status storing again from the dots. This is why it suits so well with the Unsnare and Larva, because it takes a moment for the enemies to get grouped up regardless, where you're free to uncast your one before shooting. Muzzle Flash includes kills done by you, so we will be using this to blind enemies in general within our vicinity. It will also blind anything that somehow survives your shot and works well even for builds without the grouping CC. We've chosen Ensnare for this particular showcase, but just keep in mind Ensnare is restricted to only being able to pull enemies towards an area they already exist. This means you are limited in how you can use it, but it caters more towards a dynamic playstyle, whereas Larva can be casted anywhere even where enemies aren't present to drag them there. Larva would be better for camp strats. You would want to run Larva augment though so you can spam it faster if you go that route because we do have neutralish duration. And this is why I took Ensnare because I don't really want to deal with losing a slot. This particular Mesa has sky high range not only for that fat 26.5 meter Ensnare radius but also get as wide as blind possible on our muzzle flash. We get a 31.8 meter blind radius for 5.7 seconds whenever it procs and I can tell you it's gonna proc a lot. This is extremely useful for CCing enemies this way. We don't need strength since our 1 is only being used to apply status with Envoy, which doesn't scale with strength. The damage given by your 2 is irrelevant and only used for the blind. We replaced your 4 with another ability that ignores strength. Really only your 3 cares about it at this point, but you don't really necessarily need it either with the blinds we have, Rolling Guard and Augur mods and a pistol build such as Asmoth for the Mimi viral application or Epitaph as a stat stick, so these should be more than enough to keep you alive. In fact, maybe Maybe you're bringing a Prisma Burst Laser and you're sent all to equip Augur Mods for you so he can still use an actual pistol build. I've slotted Fleeting since duration really only matters for our 2 and we still get a 5.7 second stun even at 95 duration. This means we don't need Energize on the build. Prime Sure Footed is an obvious choice with this AoE Wire Guided Cannon that has 14.88 meter radius. I've opted for a Combat Discipline Arcane Avenger build like I've said to stabilize the crits and the Clear Arcane Acceleration, which I also use for the Viral Slash Envoy so that it doesn't feel as sluggish. Now let's play with this one. Heavy Gunner Select before. We're gonna start with full Galvanized and Merciless stacks because there are a few things I wanna show. This is the gas build with Prime Firestorm instead of Malgum Serration. There's one big change on this setup. I need to have my one up, always. Before I shoot, I need to uncast it, then fire Envoy and recast. See? That works pretty well, right? That's because gas doesn't scale with elements, so being able to save a mod slot to add more damage potential is a huge boon. The significance Prime Firestorm and Amalgam Furex body count make on this weapon is enough to get this gas slash build competitive with Viral Slash even though Viral isn't present. That said, it's a little bit more complex because you need to always manage your one. However, it is just a nice spin that feels pretty cool and is very consistent on the gas application, so at least at base steel path, everything I can guarantee you will always die on the first shot. The main damage output is gas, and your one with augment is giving you 100% flat status, so the build has a 157.6 status chance per multi-shot. Now how about we do what the real thing this build is good for? If I group them up with Ensnare, we get overlapping gas clouds, reminiscent of my Rack to Gas Dagger setup, but this time we don't have any armor strip, it would just be pure overlapping gas dots. This also means Prime Firestorm becomes redundant, and technically, you don't even have to run Fear Axe either. So let's replace Prime Firestorm with Amalgam Serration for the free base damage of her easier scaling, as well as the free sprint speed and try again. Corrupted Heavy Gunners, and this time without Firestorm. We have our stacks built up again, and I'll cast and snare. While waiting for the enemies to pull in, I uncast my one and then shoot Envoy and recast my one. Instant death. Pretty cool, right? Even through all that armor, they still die instantly. Let's try it again. Respawn them, then head over to cast and snare, uncast my one, shoot and recast. Poof, dead. So while this build is a bit slower to play out, I actually like it a lot because it pulls ahead in consistency of Viral Slash for Ordinary Steel Path. You will basically one-shot anything you touch, so long as you are fine with this slower playstyle. It's interesting lets you take advantage of the pull delay on Ensnare to further set up. If the cast time is a bit too slow for you on R1, I would say you can drop Augur Reach for Natural Talent as you will still have 23.5 meter pull radius. Keep in mind the Muzzle Flash is present also and has an even larger radius than Ensnare. Let's do a quick show of what happens when I'm shooting Gallery active. You see that flash? 
So basically, every time you shoot into a crowd, as long as the previous crowd you killed had at least 6 enemies in it, you will blind the new crowd as well as anything around you. This is extremely useful for once the build can no longer consistently one-shot enemies. It also just has massive range in general and is a cool quality of life as otherwise the kit lacks some kind of good CC. And you don't even need Energize like I said because everything's so cheap. Feel free to take Xeneric if you want for Energizing Dash I guess. You only need to spend 40 energy per group of enemies to kill them. And occasionally recast your 2 for 20 energy once every half minute. So technically you can even take Vazarin if you're going endless. Now let's take a look at the final build. This is an electric envoy I've been suggesting to look at by community member. So this build creates viral and electric with a single mod. The build is identical to the gas setup with just malignant force as an elemental. This is because the Nate Cold now takes priority over the bonus electric according to the HCET hierarchy. Therefore we get viral electric. Unfortunately, this means my Toximod is combining with the NA Cold instead of being able to boost the main damage of my desired DPS element, Electric. I can't even mod Electric by itself because this will create corrosive from modding both Toxin and Electric manually. Electric also scales off elementals, unlike gas, so it's unfortunate that we can't improve this waiting further both for a higher proc chance and more damage. That said, the builds still appear to work decently, which is why I'm showing you this idea today. We still have Hunter Munitions as your safety net to help our initial Gavanize and Merciless stacks going. The one thing about electric is that it's kind of eh on non-bunch enemies and because electric weight is so low isn't as likely to proc gas as the other build even with 157.6% status after the augment. I'd say you can treat this build as basically a slightly weaker slash dots but also has the bonus massive electric chaining if you do group enemies up. Because the build has virals just like the first one and with such high weight it's basically guaranteed to proc on every shot after multi-shot comes into play especially with the augment. The only question is whether electric procs or not. If it does, enemies will die. If it doesn't, they survive. Unless Hunter Munitions covers my ass. It feels like a riskier DPS version of the gas build. However, while gas lingers and can help rebuild your augment stacks on new enemies in the area, electric has sustained CC against anything that survives. Ensnare is super useful on this build, and probably near mandatory. Now, electric has higher DPS than gas and grouped up enemies, but the problem is once an enemy is dead, the electric procs that contributed to the enemy chaining is immediately gone. Unlike gas. This means anything that survives will start losing an exponential amount of electric chaining dots as everything else around it dies. So while it is really good at killing crowds, it will only kill most of the crowd. And very often you will end up with a few stragglers. I will say it generally kills 90% of them and leaves one or two corrupted heavy gunners in this testing alive. Anyways, let's stop putting pen to paper and start putting money where my mouth is. We're gonna test the first build with Prime Firestorm instead of Malcolm Serration. This is for non instared enemies playstyle. Just like the gas setup. I've already built up my Galvanize and Merciless, so let's go. I spawn Heavy Gunners, uncast my 1, shoot, and recast my 1. Wow. So most of them are dead. While it seems to work decently well, a second shot should be enough to finish them off. Let's try them one more time just in case this was a fluke. Respawn, uncast my 1, shoot, and recast. Well, there we go. I haven't factored in your 2 since that isn't really part of the rotation, but you can just keep it up at all times for recasting once every half minute, as it will blind everything that doesn't die and anything around you that isn't pulled in yet. Actually, the way how they don't immediately die makes it even easier to rebuild your 1 stacks before you go for the next crowd. How about if we go for the ensnare setup? Sure thing. So I just need to swap Prime Firestone for Amalgam Serration again. And perfect. I'll spot the enemies, make sure I had Galvanize and Merciless stacks built up, we cast and snare, uncast our 1, shoot, and recast our 1. See? All dead. So the nice thing about having enemies survive, like just before, you can shoot them normally without your 1 to charge it up again. For the gas build, because they always die with the ensnare, it can be difficult to get your 1 recast in time to benefit from the dots to set it up for the next group of enemies you kill. Of course, as levels go ever higher, this won't be a problem anymore as they'll stop dying on the first tick. But even if gas kills instantly and you can't restack your 1, you can just fire into a new crowd randomly without uncasting your 1 to charge it back up before uncasting your 1 and lobbing your main artillery into your enemy. Actually, if anything, you want to play this as a campy strat, you can even use the Azima build I showcased about a week ago, but build it as a viral spreader instead to also apply the viral status while rebuilding your one. You'll be restricted to wherever your Azima is, though, if you choose to use it this way. The original theory crafting, as well as the entire journey and get this video here as we are today, was streamed on Twitch a few days ago. If you're interested in seeing my process and how I come up with videos like these, or just want to see the memes unfold live, or you're just totally awesome human being that wants to support me, you can follow me live at twitch.tv slash Asian Invasions.
It's at the bottom of the screen now, as well as in the description and pinned comment. Feel free to ask me any questions as well. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like, I'm done with covering the Sisters of Parvels and Plexstar updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once more new war info drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.